Over the years, two main methods of 3D scanning have become popular and for good reasons. They work, and they work very well within their parameters and what is expected of them when they are properly understood. For those of you who come to this video wanting to get a short answer, I will say this. Photogrammetry for the win. Now for the rest of you that wants to get into the juicy details as to why and when to use which, you will find the rest of the video very entertaining but only for those who really wants to know. Photogrammetry works by taking multiple photos of the same thing from different angles and having the computer detect overlapping patterns and build up a 3D reconstruction of that which has been photographed. As you can see here, it's pretty terrible at reconstructing smooth, shiny, perfect, featureless surfaces that have little to no details. So you can forget about using photogrammetry on your plastic toys with large flat surfaces consisting of a single color. There are no visual patterns to detect. Photogrammetry and smooth, featureless, shiny surfaces are not friends. This is the only real limitation of photogrammetry, the only one that truly matters. However, it can be easily fixed. All you have to do is to mess up the surface so that it is dirty, messy, greedy, and not shiny. For my robot toy, I sprinkled baking soda on the black surfaces and used a whiteboard marker to mess up the smooth white surfaces. Taking multiple shots of the same toy again and with the magic of photogrammetry, this are the final results. There are two results here because I've decided to do it twice separately taking two separate sets of photographs. The results are absolutely amazing, and not just visually because anyone who is into 3D modeling knows good texture can often cover up bad mesh geometries. Now look at the mesh geometry without the textures. It's good for a scanned surface. It's never going to be as perfect as a 3D model modeled from scratch, but it is really good for a scanned. I would even go so far as to say that this is the upper echelon of 3D scanning regardless of what technology is being used. Now let's talk about 3D scanners, devices that use methods other than photogrammetry to obtain geometric data. For the purpose of this discussion, the type of 3D scanners I'll be focusing on are $250 scanners you can buy at your local computer stores or eBay. I understand that there are 3D scanners out there that cost upwards of $10,000, some even $20,000, but I don't exactly live in a mansion and I don't own a private jet. So if any of you out there have spare $20,000 floating around, please send it to me. I mean the cash, not the device. Now back to the discussion. Consumer-grade 3D scanners use infrared light projection to construct geometric data from whatever they are scanning. That means they can work in the dark. That means no special light setups are needed. Please understand that that does not infer that photogrammetry requires special light setup. For photogrammetry, as long as there is enough light for your camera to see the patterns, you are good to go. Sunlight is enough, more than enough. Because of the ability to scan in the dark, 3D scanners are very useful for cave scans or any area where not enough visible light can reach. But for most consumer purposes, hmm, let's do a few scans and see the results. The reason I have to do a few scans instead of just one or two is because the result from consumer level 3D scanners are usually so bad and unusable that you just have to do it a couple of times and pick the one that is actually usable. 65% of the time, the reason why most people get terrible scan results from their consumer level 3D scanner is because they did not specify to the software the area to be scanned beforehand and the level of density the scan mesh should have. If you set the area to be scanned much larger than it needs to be, 
The density of the mesh will be spread out and the detail you end up having for your intended object will be nearly non-existent. If you set the density of the mesh too low, there is simply not enough points to describe the detail of your intended object. There is another major concern when it comes to using a 3D scanner. Most consumer scanners can only scan details down to 1 to 2 mm. If your subjects have details smaller than that, you can kiss your 3D scanner goodbye. If you set your consumer grade 3D scanner parameters correctly, you can aim to achieve about 30% of the quality you can get from photogrammetry. Here are the four scan results from four separate scans of the robot using a consumer grade 3D scanner. Here again are the two results from photogrammetry. Now let's compare the best of the two methods next to each other. In this case, there is no comparison. It's very clear who the winner is here. However, before any one of you want to boo the consumer 3D scanner, remember, photogrammetry would have given us nut have we not messed up the surface pattern of the smooth, featureless plastic. And there will be times where you are not allowed to desecrate the surface of whatever you are scanning, and where it just so happened that whatever that is happened to have shiny, perfectly smooth and featureless surfaces. Under those circumstances, you can say goodbye to photogrammetry and hello to your 3D scanner. In time, 3D scanners will get cheaper and the resolution will get better. But for now, all things being equal, as far as quality is concerned, both in geometry and texture, photogrammetry reigns supreme. And it's just such a bonus that it happens to be the most accessible. Everyone have a camera phone. This is Bracel Jack, signing off. Good.